जो शहीद हुए हैं उनकी जरा याद भगत सिंह भगत सिंह एंड चंद्रशेखर आजाद आर पर मोस्ट सेलिब्रेटेड रिवोल्यूशनरीज ऑफ इंडिया विथ हैंडफुल ऑफ सेल्फलेस पेट्रियट्स दे स्टूड अगेंस्ट द माइटी ब्रिटिश पावर एंड डाइड फॉर द कॉज ऑफ इंडिया इंडिपेंडेंस इट वॉज ए फाइट दे न्यू दे कैन नॉट विन एंड येट they willingly laid their lives to protest against foreign rule ultimately they compelled the british authorities to take note of the deep unrest prevailing at that time all over india their actions provided young indians with a role model from which to draw inspiration for patriotism This video presentation concentrates on the life and activities of Patriot Bhagat Singh which may now and then partially duplicate the life described for Chandrashekhar Azad as both worked at the same time in collaboration karte hai ye zameen o aasman shaheed ho bhagat singh was born in a sikh family in the village of banga near lahore at the time of his birth his father kishan singh and two of his uncles were in jail for opposing the british rule immediately after his birth his father and his youngest uncle came home on bail while his second uncle ajit singh was still serving his sentence in the mandalay jail in burma soon after a telegram arrived with the news of ajit singh's release The grandmother kissed his grandson Bhagat saying you brought good luck to the family When the mother inquired about the arrival of her second son Ajit Singh Kishan Singh told her that Ajit left for Germany to avoid being arrested again The mother mourned bitterly in vain for her son as well as for her daughter-in-law Ajit Singh's wife In Bhagat Singh's childhood days he used to wonder why his uncle does not come home and why his aunt is always sad and weeping His mother one day explained it to him which had a great negative impact on him against the British at a very early age He will often go to his aunt and tell don't worry When I grow up I will fight with the British and bring my uncle home His aunt apparently derived consolation embraced him with tenderness and said You are a brave boy Young Bhagat always dreamt of handling rifles and guns When asked he will say I am hiding the guns to shoot the British soldiers and free my country his father's friends admired his courage and valiant dreams after finishing his schooling in the village bhagat singh went to dav college at lahore his ability of leadership was evident throughout his academic life he worshiped people who dedicated their lives for the country Of all he loved most Kartar Singh Sarawa who became a martyr at the age of 20 Because of increasing political trouble the British government passed the Rowlatt Act in 1919 
which empowered the officials to arrest anyone without any trial. Bhagat Singh was only 12 years old. He got furious and told his friends, My father and uncles were put to jail only because they loved their motherland. Under the leadership of Gandhiji, people throughout the country protested against the Rowlett Act with demonstration and meetings and faced lati charges from the police. In one such meeting in Jallianwala Bagh in Amritsar, General Dyer ordered his officers to shoot at the unarmed people attending the meeting. That mass massacre shook the country with terror. Bhagat Singh went to visit Jallianwala Bagh and emotionally touched the bullet holes with tears. He then picked up the soil that had the blood stains, thinking of those martyrs who died for no reason. He promised to sacrifice his own life for the freedom of India. Soon he joined the National College, founded by the patriotic citizens. It was here that he came into contact with Sukhdev, who soon became his friend. Sukhdev and Bhagat Singh later became inseparable partners to fight against the British. In order to awaken the mass, Bhagat Singh participated in revolutionary dramas inspiring people to bear arms to fight against foreign rule. At this point in his life, Bhagat Singh faced a dilemma and became very thoughtful. He shared his thought with Sukhdev. My father wants me to get married to please my grandmother. This is his second letter on the subject. Bhagat Singh did not want to face his father and explain the goal of his life, which was to fight for India's freedom. He decided to run away from home and he did. He went to Kanpur to meet Ganesh Shankar Vidyarthi, a great patriot in those days, who ran a free press. Ganesh gladly received him and Bhagat Singh started to work for the press. He then informed his father his whereabouts and requested him not to press him for marriage. In due course, Bhagat Singh joined the Hindustan Republic Association and took the responsibility to publish inspiring materials that will arouse people to fight for freedom. Bhagat Singh started to distribute anti-government writings in fairs and public gatherings. Many young men joined when a few plain clothes police obstructed and arrested two of them. Bhagat Singh decided to rescue them. He secretly threw the pamphlets in the opposite direction. When the crowd ran to pick up the papers out of curiosity, Bhagat Singh ran towards the police and asked them to go and stop people from picking up the papers. When the police ran towards the crowd, leaving only two constables to guard his friends, Bhagat Singh took the opportunity to hit them and free his friends. The police realized the trick played on them and rushed to arrest the wrongdoers. When they came too close, Bhagat Singh pulled his revolver and shot in the air. The police stopped in dismay and the gang disappeared. In a few days, Ganesh Vidyarthi received a letter from Kishan Singh, Bhagat Singh's father, requesting him to pursue Bhagat Singh to come home as his grandmother was ill and wished to see her grandson. Kishan Singh further assured that he would not pressurize his son to get married. Bhagat Singh came to Lahore where his grandmother was staying for treatment. He attended his grandmother with great care until she recovered. Oh, but you're
It was at this time a group of Jat Sikhs launched a protest against the British for deposing their leader Ripu Daman, Maharaj of Nava. They were visiting various villages to arouse consciousness in people against the high handedness of the British. They planned to visit Banga, Bhagat Singh's hometown. Kishan Singh, Bhagat Singh's father, asked Bhagat to go to Banga and take care of the Jat Sikhs. Bhagat Singh reached the village. He confronted the elderly people to stay away from such hospitality or else British may unload their wrath on their village. Bhagat Singh appealed to them that it would be against his conscience to refuse people to stand for a right cause. He treated the Jats very well and the leader blessed him. The British wasted no time and a warrant was issued against Bhagat Singh with the charge that he was supporting enemies to the British government. At Lahore, Bhagat Singh and his friends formed an association called Jawan Bharat Sabha. This Sabha worked for patriotic causes like the Swadeshi movement which declared non-cooperation with the British government. This Sabha also observed the Martyr's Day honoring Ram Prasad Bismil, Ashrafakullah Khan and other revolutionaries who had been hanged by the government. In September 1928, Chandrasekhar Azad, who took the leadership of the revolutionaries after Ram Prasad Bismil, called for a secret meeting of all the revolutionaries across India in Delhi. The police sought Azad as he took a leading part in the Kakori conspiracy and was hiding since then. All the revolutionaries supported armed encounter for India's freedom. They were convinced that British would not leave India by peaceful negotiations. Soon after the meeting, Chandrasekhar Azad alarmed everybody that police will try to arrest them and they should immediately disperse. Bhagat Singh came to the railway station dressed as a police constable when a police officer inquired about him. Bhagat Singh gave all false information which aroused doubt in the mind of the police official. He went to check out the information given by Bhagat Singh. Bhagat Singh guessed it right and immediately disappeared. The train was searched and they were looking for a young constable. Bhagat Singh was not found anywhere. He was sitting right in front of them as a mendicant. When the British government appointed the Simon Commission to study the political situation of India, Bhagat Singh called a meeting of the members of Navajavan Bharat Sabha. The Simon Commission was trying to bring a rift between Hindus and Muslims so that the British government may take the advantage of divide and rule in their political agenda. Bhagat Singh and his colleagues decided to join the all-party procession to oppose the Simon Commission. On October 30, 1928, Lala Lajpat Rai, the great Congress leader from Punjab, took out a huge procession. Bhagat Singh was in its forefront. The police party stopped the procession. 
Lalaji defied the orders and marched forward. The police made a lati charge and the old man was fatally injured. Bhagat Singh was shocked. He decided to give back blood for blood. The revolutionaries got together for revenge under the leadership of Azad. In a secret meeting, Azad wrote, We are fighting a war without any ammunition. Our only weapon is the spirit of sacrifice. It will be cowardly if we take the beating quietly. We must execute the police superintendent Scott who hit Lalaji. Plans were made. On December 17, 1928, a month after Lalaji's death, three of the revolutionaries, Bhagat Singh, Rajguru and Jai Gopal, planned to work jointly, while Chandrasekhar stood as the backup. Jai Gopal stood in front of the police station opposite DAV College. He pretended to be busy in repairing the bicycle. They were all waiting for Scott to come out of the police station. As soon as a British police officer came out, Jai Gopal signaled to Bhagat Singh and Rajguru, waiting behind a tree. Unfortunately, the British official was not Scott. He was his assistant, Saunders. When the police official was about to start his motorcycle, Bhagat Singh and Rajguru started shooting at him and he instantly fell dead. Bhagat Singh and Rajguru started running towards the DAV college and a constable followed. Azad came out of the hideout and warned the constable before shooting him down. Bhagat Singh and Rajguru entered the DAV college went upstairs and escaped through the window. A bike was waiting for them and they together got away. When the party rejoined for reassessment, Chandrasekhar informed that they killed a wrong guy. But it was still a jolt to the British government for the daring acts of the revolutionaries. Notices appeared all over the city, posted by the revolutionary party expressing their regret for killing a wrong white man. But they justified their act as all the British officials were part of the foreign rule. Public supported their action. The police launched intensive search for the murderers. Roads were blocked and train stations were put under strict surveillance. While police was looking for the individuals Traveling alone, a well-to-do family with a servant arrived on a tanga. The head of the family was Bhagat Singh, in the disguise of a gentleman elegantly dressed in European style. The pretending wife and child were from the family of one of the revolutionaries, Bhagavati Charan. The servant with baggage was Rajguru. The gentleman bought the ticket for Calcutta and finally settled down comfortably in his compartment. The police was still searching for them on the railway station. The train left with the culprits. Chandrasekhar escaped to Mathura as an ascetic. Upon his arrival in Calcutta, Bhagat Singh went to Jyotindas. Jyotindas knew how to make bombs. Bhagat Singh asked him to come to Agra. 
where a secret factory for making bomb was on its way to production. When sufficient number of bombs were ready to be used, the revolutionaries got together to work out a plan. It was at this time a labor dispute bill was to be introduced which meant to suppress the labor class. Bhagat Singh suggested throwing a weak bomb within the assembly without hurting anyone. He also volunteered himself for doing the job. The idea was approved and arrangement was on its way to establish the escape route for the person throwing the bomb when Bhagat Singh objected. Persons participating in throwing the bomb should get arrested and that will help in the agitation of freedom movement. Thus Bhagat Singh, accompanied by Bhutukeshwar Dutt, dropped the bomb in the central assembly while Bhutukeshwar was busy in distributing the pamphlets. No one was hurt. Police immediately arrested them without any resistance. They shouted the slogans of freedom movement and proudly admitted that they did it in order to make their ideas audible that disapproved the continuation of a foreign rule. Bhagat Singh was later transferred to Lahore jail along with other revolutionaries. He has some books to read but was refused. The food was also unfit for human consumption. Bhagat Singh decided to go on hunger strike. In the meantime, police rounded up many of the revolutionaries and they stood for trial. The only one still missing was Azad. Bhagat Singh's father, Kishan Singh, approached Bhagat Singh to give his consent for an appeal. Bhagat Singh declined. He wrote to his father his determination to sacrifice his life for the cause of India's freedom. Kishan Singh felt proud for his son. On October 7, 1930, Bhagat Singh was informed by the state advocate about his verdict. He would be hanged for his treason against the British government. Bhagat Singh had no remorse. And the moth of the flame of liberty, replied Bhagat Singh with pride. His mother came to bless him and his younger brother Kultar Singh was in tears. Bhagat Singh felt sorry for his younger brother and wrote a letter of consolation on the following day. On March 23rd, 1931, the day Bhagat Singh was to be hanged, prison officials came to lead him to the gallows and found him reading a book on the life of Lenin. He completed the book and closed it, ready to accompany the prison officials. Other prisoners, Sukhdev and Rajguru, were also lined up on way to the gallows. They started singing revolutionary songs. Other prisoners joined them with patriotic slogans. All three young prisoners were hanged at the same time in the evening at 7 p.m. Entire city of Lahore responded with shouts and slogans in support of their ideals. They became martyrs for India's freedom.